Hi, this video is going to cover the ACT math topic of systems of equations. So we're going to talk about how to solve system of equations graphically by substitution and by elimination. And then we've got four ACT practice problems that we're going to solve and discuss. Let's take a look. So let's take a look first at the graphical solution of a system of equations. So if we were to graph these two lines. We've got the first one graphed in purple and the second one graphed in red. Every point that's on that purple line will make that first equation true. And every point that's on that second line will make the second equation true. But there's only one point that's going to make both those equations true, and that's that point right there that's on both lines. So if we look at that point, that's going to be the solution to our system of equations, is where they intersect. So this particular solution for this equation would be x equals 3 and y equals 6, and that's going to make both of those equations true. Let's take another look at this, another system here. So if I had to graph these two, I'm graphing the first one in red and the second one in blue, these two never meet anywhere. So I can't find a point that's on both lines. And if you notice the graph, they both have um, a slope of 2 thirds. Uh, right, look at the equations, both of them have 2 thirds x. So they have the same slope. Lines with the same slope are going to be parallel, so they never meet. So in this situation, we have no solution. Let's look at one more case. Let's graph these two. Let's graph the first one in red. And then when we go to graph the second one in green, it lays right on top of the other one. So if we were to rearrange these two equations, you could actually see that those two equations are actually going to be the same equation. They're going to lie right on top of each other, and every single point that's on one of the lines is also going to be on the other line. So in this situation, we say that there is an infinite number of solutions. Not that any number will make it true, but any number on that line will satisfy both of those equations. And there's an infinite number of points that are on both of those lines. So let's take a look at the substitution method. So we've got these two equations. We're trying to find the x and y that make both of these equations true at the same time. So if we take one of the equations, y, equals, y plus 3x equals 15, the first equation tells us that y and 2x are the same. y equals 2x. So we can take 2x and put it in for y into the equation. That's the substitution part. That's why it's called substitution. You're putting one thing in for another. Then we can combine the 2x and 3x, combine our like terms, and get 5x equals 15. Divide both sides by 5, and we get x equals 3. So that's one of our answers. So x equals 3 is one of our answers for the solution. But in solving a system, we've got to find the x and the y. So what we've got to do is we've got to take x equals 3 and put it into one of the equations. Now you can use either equation, but in here we're going to use the y equals 2x because it's already solved for y. It's going to be a much easier way to do it. So if we take the y equals 2x, we know that x equals 3. We're going to put 3 in for x. And then 2 times 3 is 6. So we get y equals 6, and our two answers are x equals 3 and y equals 6. Those are going to both make both of those equations true. And you can put 3 and 6 into those equations and see that, that it does indeed make both of those equations true. So let's take a look at solving by elimination. We've got these two equations, a system of equations. We're trying to find the x and y that are going to make both of these equations true at the same time. So we're going to take both the equations, and we're going to add them together. So the 2y and the minus 2y is going to get us 0y. 3x and 2x is going to get us 5x. And then if we add the 13 and 2, we'll get 15. Now we've got 0x there, but we 0x means the same as if we had nothing there at all. So we can get rid of the 0y. And this is the elimination part. So this is why they call it elimination. When we add these two together, the y's get eliminated from the equation. And then we have one equation with one variable. And then we can solve for that variable that way. So 5x equals 15. We can just divide by 5 and get x equals 3. So x equals 3 is part of our solution. But we've got to find the x and the y that make those true. So we're going to take one of these equations. We can take either equation. 
I'm just going to take the first one. It looks a little easier to work with. We know that x is 3. We've already solved for x. So we can put in x to the equation for 3. Multiply 3 by 3 and get 9. Subtract that from both sides. And we'll get 2x, uh, 2y equals 4. Divide both sides by 2. And we get y equals 2. So then we get x equals 3 and y equals 2. That's the x and y values that are going to make both of these equations true. And therefore, that's the solution to this system of equations. Okay, so we've got four ACT math problems that have to do with system of equations. On the first one, um, we've got a, a word problem. Uh, the ACTs like to put... Um, put system of equations in word problems where on the SAT you just ha have a system kind of written straight out um, here we just have to create the system first on this so let's take a look at in what information we've got so we've got two book clubs one's forty dollars a month plus two dollars a book and the other one is thirty five a month plus three dollars per book and we want to find out where those are equal all right, so those equations are going to look like 40 plus 2, we use B for books, and that's going to equal the other one, which is 35, which is the monthly fee, plus $3 a book. And then we just solve for B here, so subtract 2B from both sides. That cancels out, 40 equals 35 plus A. B, subtract 35 from both sides, and you get 5 for B, which is choice H. So the second problem, we also have a word problem. Um, we're selling um, a total of 70 figurines. And then they come in two sizes. The large is $12, and then the small is $8. And we want to find out um, how many large figurines they sold when um, they're equal. So it's an equal amount, and we want to solve for the number of large. So let's set up the equation. So the total being um, 70, let's use um, L and S for large and small. So if we add the number of large and small together, we're going to get 70. Now let's look at the other equation. We have the same amount of money coming in for large and small. The amount of money coming in for um, large is going to be 12 times L. And for small is going to be 8 times S. And we set those two equals to each other because it tells us here that it that they're equal. So there's our two equations. Now we can solve that um, either uh, substitution or elimination. So let's take a look at both ways. So elimination. Let's set this. Let's just subtract the 8s um, from both sides and get zero. And then if we take the first one and multiply by 8, we would get 8L plus 8S equals 560. Now when we add the two together, the S's get eliminated, and we get 20L equals 560, or L equals 28, and our answer is B. Now let's see how we would do that with substitution. So let's take the same two equations again. L plus S is 70 and 12L equals 8S. So substitution we would just have to solve something for S or L first. So let's take this first one and let's solve it for, since we're trying to find um, L, let's solve it for um, S. S equals 70 minus L. So we can get everything in terms of L, since that's what we're trying to solve for. Now let's plug that into here. Let's substitute that in for S. So 12L is going to equal 8 times 70 minus L. Multiply out by distribution. 
twelve L equals five hundred and five hundred and sixty minus eight L add L eight L to both sides and you get twenty L equals five sixty or L equals twenty eight. Same answer we got before. So either by elimination or by substitution, we can solve this. Okay, in this problem, they're asking where we would have an infinite number of solutions. So we've got to solve for this A right here and have a setup where it's an infinite number of solutions. So I'm going to do this two different ways. So one, when we're um, when we're doing elimination, if both of the variables get eliminated and then we have a statement that's true, that's where we're going to get an infinite number of solutions. So let's see what we're going to do with that. So in order to eliminate, to make these match, I'm going to take this one here and multiply by negative 3 so that we're lined up to do elimination. So that's going to be negative 6x plus plus 3y equals negative 24. And then we're going to pull down the second equation. 6x minus 3y equals 4a. And when we add them together, these cancel, these cancel, and we get 0 equals 4a minus 24. Add 24 to both sides. And again, we're looking for this equation to be true. If we came up with something, if they were asking you for um, where would there be no solution, then this would be something that was not true. But since it's infinite number of solutions, we're looking for what makes this true. So 24 equals 4a, or a equals 6. And b would be our answer. Another way we can approach this is... Um, if we put these into slope-intercept form, for an infinite number of solutions, we're going to have the two lines on top of each other. So you're going to have the slope and the y-intercept are going to be the same. So that's another way we can do it. So if we take this and put it into y-intercept form, it's going to be y equals 2x minus 8. If we solve for y on this, we've got 3y equals 6x minus 4a or we divide by 3 and we get y equals 2x minus 4 thirds a so we put each of them to slope intercept form notice the slopes match and now we just have to make the y intercept match so the y intercept is going to match when negative 8 that's the y intercept for the first equation and that's going to equal negative 4 over 3a, which is a y-intercept for the second one. So if we multiply both sides by negative 3 over 4, this will cancel out and just get a, negative 3 over 4. 4 goes into negative 8, negative 2 times, times negative 3, and this also gets us 6 as an answer. So two different ways to do it, one by elimination and one by setting them um, each equal to y to get slope intercept form and then having the slopes and the y intercept equal to get an infinite number of solutions. And the last problem I'm going to take a look at is just an example of uh, graphically. Um, so it's just asking what is true. So we know where we have intersection those are the point where the two equations are true. We have two of them, so f is going to be our answer. And if you want to look at the other answers a little further, um, exactly one point, we'll know because we just showed they intersect in two, so that's not going to be correct. But the other ones, for in order for f of x to be gr less than g of x for all of x, this would have to be below it in all instances. Here it's above it, and here it's below it. So it's not always greater than or always less than. So these are not true. And to be an inverse of a function, and graphically an inverse of a function will reflect over 
the y equals x. And we can see that that's not the case for these two. That's not a reflection over the y equals x, so that's not correct either. So our answer is going to be F. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.